Well, the half-year profit reporting season has come and gone. In February, we had many of the larger companies on our share market telling investors just how they performed over the six months to December 2023. Now, if we look at the market as a group, profits actually went back, uh, fell by about 35%. That's a pretty big drop. But what was interesting is that companies still decided to pay out quite sizable dividends to shareholders. In fact, there was just a 2% drop in dividend payments. What was also interesting is how aggressive the share price response was to some of these profit results, more so than usual. So even for those that aren't particularly interested in company profit results and how well a business has actually done, it can be an important time just to keep an eye on your investments because you can actually see some pretty sizable moves in both directions in your portfolio. Now expectations going into this season were quite low because of all the challenges facing not only the consumer but also businesses. But having said this, uh, we actually have had the market sitting at or near record highs pretty much all month. If we look at the market as a group though, we actually saw about 70% of companies either meeting or beating analyst expectations. Things varied a lot though, depending what area of the share market we look at. So let's take a look at some of them, starting with mining and energy stocks. Now this is about a third of the share market right here, and we basically had uh, share prices going backwards over the month for many of these resource stocks. Now BHP at the large, the largest uh, stock in the market and on the in the mining sector as well, we'd had no major surprises, the smallest half year profit result in about eight years. Now essentially it's doing quite nicely with iron ore, which was the big supporter here. It's its key earner as well. It makes about se almost 70% of its profits just from that one commodity. Um, but what we basically saw was nickel and coal being a real weight. So that was a reason why its dividend went backwards. Rio Tinto also had a 20% drop in profits, doing well with iron ore, but it basically made less from everything else, from uh, aluminium, copper, and also uh, minerals. And that's why it declared a smaller dividend. No such troubles for Fortescue Metals. It is a pure iron ore play, so it makes all of its money essentially from one commodity. And it really benefited from higher iron ore prices, despite the slowdown in China. So that saw revenue news rise, a bigger profit, and also a larger dividend. Lithium prices have generally gone backwards for some time though, due to less demand for electric vehicles and, and lithium that goes into batteries. So companies like Pilbara really struggled, Pilbara's profits actually fell 80% and uh, that was a reason why it decided not to pay a dividend to shareholders. In the energy space, Woodside saw a 74% drop in profits, a sizable decline, but actually wasn't really a surprise. It was in line with analyst expectations because of a 30% fall in oil and gas prices, but also quite well telegraphed and flagged a, a, a write down in the value of some of its assets over in the United States. Uh, uranium prices have generally been elevated though, and that's seen um, companies like Paladin are benefiting. Now looking at the banks, now a large area of our market, the big five are worth about $530 billion combined. That's about 20% of the ASX overall, but most of the banks will actually release their results in May. We did have some quarterly updates from many of the financials though, and CBA recorded a small 3% drop in its profits for the half. Retail stocks. Now retailers always receive plenty of attention because we've all got a relationship in one way or another to retailers. Now, retail uh, stock prices actually rose by about 8% over the month, which was a, an outperformance compared to the broader market. Now, expectations for retailers were pretty low because of you know 13 rate hikes we've had over the past couple of years and a pretty cautious consumer. So there was, really wasn't too much disappointment here. West Farmers, which is behind Bunnings, Kmart, and Officeworks said that its half year profits were up about 3%. It was driven in part by Kmart, and it also raised its dividend. JB Hi-Fi had a 20% fall in its profits for the half, but overall the result was ahead of expectations and it uh, did reduce its dividend but didn't seem to hurt the stock too much with it actually hitting a record high, as did West Farmers. Harvey Norman had a pretty big lift in its share price when it reported right at the end of February. Even though its sales and profits and dividends went backwards, there seemed to be encouragement about how it did in January and also a more positive outlook as well. Elsewhere, let's look at consumer staples. Now, the, as a sector, it didn't do really so well it underperformed the broader market, but this is a sector that's generally considered to be defensive in nature. It's dominated by the supermarket chains, which have had a, an eventful couple of months on markets. Now, Woolies posted a $780 million half-year loss because of some one-off costs, but the reason why its shares didn't do so well seemed to be the surprise resignation of its chief executive, which actually came just days after appearing 
on ABC's Four Corners. Coles certainly um, outperformed its rival. Its revenues were up. It did a touch better than expected. Its profits fell, but not as much as feared, and margins were a bit better as well. Endeavour Drinks, which uh, is behind Dan Murphy's and BWS liquor stores, it had its uh, profits actually or revenues rather lift very slightly, but it seemed to do better than some had feared. And Treasury Wine Estates, which is behind Penfolds, it saw its profits actually go backwards, but there seemed to be excitement and chatter around China and the fact that it's getting closer potentially to start selling its product there. Looking at the insurers, well, as a group, most of the major insurers did nicely on the market. Now, one of the standouts was QBE, which almost doubled its profit in 2023, but it did seem to disappoint a bit with its dividend. Suncorp uh, saw its profits fall slightly, about 2% short of what the market was expecting, but there was more attention around ANZ getting the nod of approval to take over its banking unit. And IAG was the underperformer here. It still rose, but not as much as the other two majors. Profits fell was below consensus by about five to seven percent but something that can be actually helpful for the insurers is a higher interest rate environment we've had many rate hikes of course as i pointed out and that can actually boost the amount of money that they earn in returns for their multi-billion dollar investment portfolios looking at healthcare well these are there were many examples in this sector of companies that are still feeling the impacts in one way or another to a post-covid world Hearing implant maker Cochlear is one of them. It uh, hit a record high, profits were up 35%, dividends managed to jump about 30% as well, and it raised its profit goal. So there's been so much pent up demand for these elective surgeries in a post-COVID world. And it also seems to have been winning some market share from its competitors and rivals globally that have had product recalls. CSL, easily the biggest stock in Australia's healthcare sector, uh, saw its revenues lift 11% and profits up about 20. It was largely in line but really for CSL it comes down to how much plasma it's collecting and at what cost and it's continued to improve post-COVID where it had a lot of trouble uh, getting enough of the stuff to make its highest selling products. Looking at pathology stocks like uh, Sonic Healthcare and also Helios were well, both underperformed a bit and that's not really surprising considering that uh, during COVID at the peak they were both carrying out tens of thousands of COVID tests on a daily basis and obviously that has dried up. Travel next up. Well, travel stocks generally did poorly as far as uh, how the share market responded. We had uh, declines in share price for Qantas, for Webjet, and also for corporate travel management. But one of the standouts here was Flight Center. It swung back to profitability. It made $20 million more than expected over the course of the half. It is paying out a, a dividend, which was a bit smaller, but a dividend nonetheless. So you know, it's benefited from low unemployment, high demand for travel, and also raised its full year guidance. Finally, tech stocks. Now, easily one of the, the best performing areas in our market over the month. In fact, in February, we had tech stocks lifting in the order of 20%. And that's because most of the big names actually had some pretty sizable improvements. WiseTech was one of them. The logistics software company, one of the biggest um, uh, contributors, it raised its dividend, it lifted its profits, and it grew more optimistic with its guidance. Accounting software group Zero uh, actually came out with an investor day, meeting with investors, and basically announcing a new strategic partnership in the United States. But as was the case with some of the other tech stocks, it uh, said that it's ramping up its AI capabilities. Next DC in a similar boat, it's had plenty of demand for uh, AI related uh, services, and basically it said that its profits were generally higher. That wraps up the season. Let's hope the next one's even better.